Welcome back to this fifth video about postdoc tests. In this video, we'll discuss Tuchel's test and Annette's test. These tests will be compared to the previous postdoc test that we have discussed so far. Tuchel's test, also called Tuchel's honor significance test, is a common postdoc test that is usually applied after a significant ANOVA. However, since Tuchel's test is designed to control for multiple comparisons between several groups, it can be run without first conducting an ANOVA, just as Holmes' test or the Bonferroni method. To understand how Tuchel's test works, let's have a look at the following data where the mean systolic blood pressure is compared between four treatment groups. Four individuals are in the control group, whereas the other individuals are in the treatment groups A, B or C. Tuchel's test is designed to compare all possible pairs of means in a dataset. If we would apply Tuchel's test on the following dataset, then we would perform all six possible pairwise comparisons. One test between the control group and group A, and one test between the control group and group B, and so forth. Tuchel's test is therefore only appropriate if the aim is to compare all groups but less powerful if we like to compare a subset of all possible pairwise comparisons. For example, if we are only interested in comparing the control group with the groups A, B and C, but not compare groups A versus B, group A versus C or group B versus C, then we should use another postdoc test, such as Danette's test that we'll discuss later. Tuchel's test is based on the following formula where the numerator is the difference between the largest and the smallest mean of the pair, and the denominator is the square root of the MSC from the ANOVA and the sample size of each group. If the sample size is not equal between the groups, the tuke kramer method can be used. Note that the equation is very similar to the one used for the Fisher's LSD method. Both methods calculate the difference between the means and use the mean square within error from the ANOVA. However, Tuchel's test is based on the so-called studentized range distribution from which a critical value or a p-value is obtained, whereas Fisher's LSD method uses a t-distribution. Since this distribution can only take positive values, this explains why we need to take the largest value minus the smallest value in the numerator so that the test statistic is always positive. Let's calculate the Tuchel's test based on the following data, where one wants to compare the systolic blood pressure between young, middle-aged and old individuals. This is the same example data that we used previously for the Fisher's LSD method and an individual about one by ANOVA. If we first run an ANOVA to generate the following ANOVA table, we see that the mean square error, the MSC value, is 6.67. Note that the degrees of freedom for the within-group variation is 9, which we will use in Tuchel's test. Let's use the following formula for the Tuchel's test to compare the mean systolic blood pressure between a young and middle-aged group. We first subtract the two means, and divide by the square root of MSC from our previous ANOVA, and the sample size of 4. We see that the test statistic is equal to 3.873. We then use this value in a studentized range distribution with k equal to the number of groups and the degrees of freedom related to the MSE from the ANOVA. The area to the right hand side of 3.873 for this distribution is 0 0.054, which is the corresponding p-value for comparing the two groups. Note that it is also possible to extract the critical value from a studentized range distribution table with three groups and nine degrees of freedom. The critical value from such a table is 3.95 if you use an alpha value of 0 0.05. Since our test statistic is less than the critical value, this means that the p-value will be greater than 0 0.05. We should therefore not reject the null hypothesis. Tuchel's test will generate the following p-values for this example. This p-value was the one we calculated earlier. We see that the only p-value that is less than the general significance level of 0 0.05 is the p-value from the comparison between the young and old individuals. We can therefore conclude that old people have a significantly higher mean systolic blood pressure compared to young individuals. 
Here is a summary of the test that we have used so far based on the blood pressure example. Both Fisher's LSD method and Holmes method result in p-values less than 0.05, whereas the Bonferroni method only identifies a significant difference between young and old individuals. Although Tukey's test only rejects one of the hypotheses, its values are quite similar to the ones observed from the Holmes method. We will later compare these tests again. We will now have a look at one last postdoc test, the Danette's test, which is a very powerful test when the aim is to compare only one group to all other groups in the dataset. This is typically the case when you have a control group that we like to compare to a set of treatments. In this example, we like to compare the control group to the groups of individuals that try either drugs A, B or C to reduce the systolic blood pressure. The aim is therefore not to compare the treatments with each other. We are therefore not interested in comparing A with B, A with C or B with C. In comparison to Tukey's test, which would compare all six possible pairs, Donet's test is here only applied on three comparisons where the control group is involved. Danette's test has therefore generally greater power than Tukey's test for this kind of study design. Both methods account for the dependency that arises when one group is compared to several groups. Both methods can also compute a confidence interval. We will now study the different p-values that are generated by the different postdoc tests where the aim is to make comparisons only between the control group and the three treatments. In this example, we will therefore only compare the control group to the three different treatments, although there are six possible comparisons. Fish's LSD test results in the smallest p-values. However, this test is not recommended since we now have more than three groups, where we can commit more than one type 1 error. Danette's and Holmes test result in about the same p-values. Note that Holmes test should only adjust the three p-values of interest. All those six possible p-values can be calculated. Since we make three comparisons, the Bonferroni method multiplies the p-values from Fisher's LSD test by three. In comparison to Holmes test, it only rejects one of the null hypotheses. Tukey's test results in relatively large p-values since it compares all six pairs. Tukey's test is therefore not appropriate when we do not want to compare all possible pairs. In addition, it would not be appropriate to adjust the p-values by a factor of 6 for a Holmes test and the Bonferroni method when we only want to make three comparisons in this example. When we like to compare a control to several treatments, Danette's test or Holmes test are better alternatives compared to the other methods that we have discussed so far. Similar to Fisher's LSD test, Tukey's test and Danette's test also assume that the observations are independent, normally distributed, and that the groups have equal variance. This was the end of this video. In the final lecture, we'll discuss how to select an appropriate postdoc test. Thanks for watching.